I find that this chair is much more comfortable than some of you. tend to forget, which is kind of funny. <laughs>
Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to this Easter morning celebration. It's a beautiful, sunny spring day. It feels wonderful to be here with all of you. And as we start our service today, uh, we will be doing so with a piece that really uh, tries to draw a picture of what that morning was like, the morning of uh, the resurrection of Jesus with the, the darkness at the beginning and then a beautiful light coming, a light of hope that brings us to today's celebration. Um, I would like to thank our accompanists today, uh, Elliot Kim, who's going to be playing with the bells uh, and uh, with, for these pieces. So make sure that you make him feel welcome today as well. As we listen to our music, please uh, use this time to disconnect from the outside world and get in tune with today's celebration.
Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Welcome to First Church of Lombard, United Church of Christ. Welcome, however you are joining us for worship today, whether you're here in the sanctuary or online. We are an open and affirming congregation and a just peace congregation. We are striving to live out the great commandment to love God and to love our neighbor. Through heartfelt worship, faith exploration for all ages, loving, caring relationships, and acts of service and justice, we seek to be a faithful community where individual faith journeys are honored and critical independent thinking is valued. All God's children of all ages are always welcome in worship at First Church of Lombard. This morning, the kids are invited to worship with their families here in the sanctuary as we celebrate Easter. As always, children who need uh, some busy hands to be occupied during worship can grab an activity from the quiet corner uh, out in the narthex and bring it with them into the sanctuary. Parents with younger children may also make use of the nursery, which is across from the office as needed. Please note that the room is not staffed, uh, though you can hear the service in there. Sunday school will resume next week, Sunday, April 7th. We would ask that you fill out the ministry pads in the red plastic folders and pass it along to the others in your pew. There should be one in each pew. If you're visiting, we'd appreciate if you'd leave us your name, an address, or an email, or a phone number so we can contact you this week and let you know how happy we are that you worshiped with us today. Uh, everyone is welcome to join in coffee hour. Uh, today it will be out in the foyer after worship. And now if you'd stand as able and greet one another for the passing of the peace. Please join us in the opening song.
Please join me in the opening prayer. God of the resurrection, we gather this morning as a community of believers. We come with joy to greet one another and to tell again and again the amazing news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the ultimate turn of events, love is victorious over death. In the midst of our joy, we acknowledge our need for forgiveness. Open our eyes and our hearts to your love. May our singing, praying, listening, and proclaiming be a testimony to the power of your love to make us a new creation as a community of faith. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. For those of you who don't know, I am Jill Terpstra. I'm the pastor here at First Church of Lombard, and it is so great to welcome you, all of you, on Easter and to celebrate together uh, today. Throughout Lent, we were doing um, a series called Lovers and Fools, where many of you were here and you filled out hearts. And sometimes, we, some weeks we put our worries on them, some weeks we put um, our hopes and our promises to God. And those hearts uh, were transformed into flowers that are now on the cross. So your hopes and your worries and your promises to God have been transformed into new life. And I hope that as you worship today, um, you see signs of new life all around you. Um, before I read the scripture, I also want to um, acknowledge one of our musicians. Thank you, Amelia Underwood, for also playing the trumpet. Uh, Amelia's name was left off, so we're grateful for her. Now let us hear, we will hear the story of the resurrection in two parts um, from the Gospel of John. And while this is a familiar story to us, it is my hope that as you listen to these words today, something new or different might strike you. So hear these words from the Gospel of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
The reading continues. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for gathering us together on this Easter Sunday. We thank you for your promise of new life. I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable for you, God, are our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Well, since tomorrow is April Fool's Day, I'm going to break one of my own preaching rules and start off with a couple jokes. Why did the Easter egg hide? It was a little chicken. <laughs> Where does the Easter bunny go for breakfast? I hop, that's right. <laughs> and this isn't so much of a joke, but more of a story. It's a story about Palm Sunday and a little girl because she had a sore throat stayed home from church with her mother. And when the rest of the family returned home, they were carrying palm fronds. The little girl asked them what they were for. And her brother said, people wave them over Jesus' head as he rode by on a colt. Wouldn't you know it, the little girl said, the one Sunday I'm sick, Jesus shows up and offers pony rides. <laughs> Today we are celebrating Easter, a joyous occasion, an occasion that makes us want to laugh. But as it is the day before April Fool's Day, I want one thing to be clear. The resurrection was not a trick. Jesus was not just playing dead for a few days only to jump out and startle everyone by jumping out of the tomb. Jesus really died and was resurrected. And Jesus died, and the way that he died was horrible. He was arrested by the authorities, mocked and beaten. He was hung on a cross to die a criminal's death. He was betrayed and denied by his closest friends and abandoned by his friends and even abandoned by God. The ultimate joke that we celebrate is not just that God brought Jesus back from the dead, but the, that the Son of God was humiliated, suffered, died, and still came back to life. The Apostle Paul understood this when he said, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us are, who are being saved, it is the power of God. The cross is what was foolish for Paul, not the resurrection. Paul, who was a Pharisee who persecuted Christians prior to his conversion, thinks it's absolutely preposterous, laughable, hysterical, that God, the Savior of the world, would undergo the most horrible, suffering, humiliating death. That's what's unbelievable for Paul. 
It's hard for Paul to believe that God would stoop that low. And if heroes stoop that low, then the inverse must also be true, that those who are the lowest can be lifted up. In fairy tales and movies, we love a good underdog story. Whether it's in sports, when we all faithfully root for the Bears, knowing that there's no chance that they're going to win. (laughs) Or when it's beauty when she falls in love with the beast. We like to root for the underdog. In the novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Victor Hugo recreates an ancient festival called the Feast of Fools. This was a medieval festival that was held in France where people dressed up like clowns and jesters and they elected a mock bishop and the low and the high officials traded place for a day. And Hugo's telling the disfigured and recluse Quasimodo is crowned king of the fools. In the Disney adaptation of this story, this festival is celebrated in a song called Topsy Turvy. And the words, the lyrics of the song say, come one, come all, leave your looms and your milking stools, coop the hens and pen the mules, come one, come all, close the churches and the schools, it's the day for breaking rules, come and join the feast of fools. It continues saying, once a year we throw a party here in town, once the year we turn Paris upside down, every man's a king and every king's a clown. Once again, it's topsy-turvy day. Here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. Here it is, you know exactly what's in store. Now it's time we laugh until our sides get sore. Now it's time to crown the king of fools. So make a face that's horrible and frightening. Make a face that's gruesome as a gargoyle's wing. For the face that's the ugliest will become the king of kings. And in that story, Quasimodo is the one who is crowned the king of fools because he is seen as the lowliest and the most forgotten person because of his hunchback and his disfigured face. But his celebrity status doesn't last long because the crowd soon turns on him and returns to mocking his horrible appearance. See, the crowds can tolerate an underdog for a little while, the weirdos and the misfits getting their day to shine, it's okay if they succeed every once in a while. But if the losers become the hero of the story, is that the story? What if the truth of the resurrection is that God suffered and died and then was resurrection, was resurrected? The singer and songwriter Brandy Car. Lyle sings a song called The Joke. And the song talks about people who act the opposite, how everyone expects. It talks about a boy who is gentle and quiet, a girl who's trying to make it in a male-dominated world, a refugee who is seen as weak after she carries her baby on her back through, through the desert. Carlisle says in this song, I see you to each of these forgotten and ignored people. Carlisle said in an interview about the song, there are so many people who are feeling misrepresented today, so many people feeling unloved. This song is for people that feel underrepresented, unloved, or illegal. She calls the song an anthem for the disenfranchised. As she sings, they can kick dirt in your face, dress you down and tell you that your place is in the middle when they hate the way you shine. Let them laugh while they can. Let them spin. Let them scatter in the wind. I have been to the movies. I have seen how it ends. And the joke's on them. The joke that we experience in the resurrection isn't that the underdog comes out on top just sometimes or every once in a while. But the joke that we experience as at the resurrection is that the underdog comes out on top every single time. Every single time the unloved, the despised, the misunderstood, and the forgotten win in God's upside down, topsy-turvy world. And that is what we celebrate at the resurrection. Our God is a God who endured and understands suffering and knows what it is like to be unloved, despised, misunderstood, and forgotten. 
And God overcame all of that misery and came back to life to let us know that God will always be with us. That is the miraculous and amazing joke and the inspiring part of this story. And the recollection of the story that I told you from the Gospel of John, Mary finds the tomb empty and she stands weeping outside of the tomb. And as she weeps, she bends over to look into the tomb and she sees two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they say to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she says to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and she sees a man staying, standing there and she does not know that it is Jesus. And Jesus says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And thinking that he is the gardener, she says, sir, they have carried him away. Tell me where you have laid him and I will go and find him. Jesus says to her, Mary. And at the sound of her name, Mary recognizes Jesus. Mary, when she is at her lowest, saddest time in her life, the resurrected Jesus is standing right there, standing beside her with full understanding of the depth of her pain and her sadness, as if he was saying, I see you, I know how you feel, and I am right here. Whether we like to admit it or not, we all have been the underdog at one point or another in our lives. Whether we were an awkward teenager or an insecure young adult, a self-doubting parent, a rejected lover, an ignored friend, or a forgotten elder, we all have been in a place in our lives when we have felt like the underdog. We have all found ourselves thinking like Mary, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have put him. But in the horrible parts of our lives, Jesus is standing right next to us saying, I see you, and I know how you feel, and I am right here. That's the unbelievable part of the story. That our God became one of us and knows our pain and promises to be with us. The seminary professor Wesley Hill says, every Easter Sunday from here on out, we can all look up and remember the most famous April Fool's joke of all time, that God was there at the place of the skull, in the blood and tears of broken humanity, reconciling the world to himself, and now he is now, and that now he is to be found in our tears too. That's the unbelievable part of the story that our God became one of us and knows and feels our pain and promises to be with us. That is so incredible. And because God has made the promise to be with us when we are at our lowest, we too need to show up and speak up for those who are at their lowest the unloved, the despised, the misunderstood, the forgotten, in God's upside-down, topsy-turvy world. Today, we have the unique opportunity to think about how we might speak up for those who are forgotten and ignored, because today is not only Easter Sunday, but it is also the International Day of Transgender Visibility. And so today we acknowledge the pain caused by anti-trans legislation across the country, but we also proclaim God's love for all who are ignored and forgotten, especially lifting up our trans siblings and friends and their bravery, that they are brave enough to follow, the, the, that we might be brave enough to follow their example of becoming the true people that God created them to be. Jesus' resurrection turns the world upside down, and that resurrection reminds us that Jesus is standing right next to us and next to those who are forgotten and ignored and saying, I see you. I know how you feel. I am right here. And that is no joke. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. 
I now invite you to stand as you are able as we sing, Yours is the Glory, Resurrected One. You may be seated. <clears throat> At this time, you're invited to think about how you might celebrate Christ's resurrection by giving back to God. You may give of your time or your talents or your resources. There is a box in the back for our offerings. We are also collecting the Easter offering today. There are green cards in your pew that you can scan as a way to donate. You may mail or drop off a check to the church. You may also give on our website. We also are so grateful for all the ways that you give of your time and talents on a Sunday like this when we have so many musicians and ushers and people doing all the things so that we can be together and celebrate worship. We thank you for all the ways that you contribute to the ministry here at First Church by giving of yourselves. In a moment, we will be receiving communion, and we are using the individually sealed cups today. If you didn't have one, Kathy is coming down the aisle and can get you one. For those of you who haven't used them before, the very first tab you peel off will get you the bread, and then the second tab will get you the cup. Um, however we celebrate communion, it is a reminder and a remembrance that God is with us and resurrected 
and loves us. Family of faith, when we come to this table, we come with scars. We come with scars from the moments that we didn't belong and memories of nights that felt too long. The season of Lent, which we have just come from, reminds us that the wilderness is inescapable from time to time. So that is why we have come to this table, because here at this table all belong. Here at this table the forgotten, the ignored, and the despised are the honored guest. And here at this table we remember that life overcomes death, and that is no joke. So come to this table. Come with your prayers and your alleluias. Come with your hopes and dreams. Come not because you have to, but because you can. Jesus is here with his scars and the empty tomb. So come, for you are welcome here. Our table is open to all. Let us pray. God of the grave, God of fresh air in our lungs, God of another tomorrow, today is a day unlike any day. For they came in the d dark, disciples and women, those who loved you, those who grieved for you. They came in the dark with plans to bury you, but your love could not be buried. So today is a day unlike any day, for we are basking in light. Your goodness has found us like light finds the horizon, like moths find the light, like water finds the ocean. Today is a day unlike any other day, because the alleluias ring clear, hope echoes louder than fear, and the wilderness seems to be kept at bay. We admit it is hard to wrap our minds around a love like yours, a love that never runs out, a love that never gives up, a love that knows our deepest fears on our hearts and chooses to love us anyway, a love that reminds us to love the despised, the unloved, and the hated. It is a love that takes our breath away. And so today we run to you, just as those disciples ran to that empty tomb. We run to you bringing our hopes and our dreams, our prayers and our insecurities. We bring with us gratitude for our church families, for cups of coffee and family recipes, gratitude for choirs that sound like angel choruses, and for sunrises that remind us of new life that is dawning. We also come with the names of our loved ones on the tips of our tongues. We ask you to be with those who are hurting today, whether they are those who are closest to us or those whose names we do not yet know. We run with you with concern for those who still feel lost in the desert, those who are still weeping in the garden, those who cannot escape the darkness of Good Friday to see Easter Sunday. We ask that you would wrap your arms around them, transform their wilderness with flowers in the desert, streams of justice and horizons of hope and fill us up with light so that we have grace for the Good Friday days, patience for the wilderness wanderings, and enough light to share with others. God, today is a day unlike any day, but it was just a few days ago when we remember that you gathered with your disciples around a table that night, the night in which you were betrayed, and you took bread. And after you blessed it, you broke it, and you said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And afterwards, you took the cup, and you said, this is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. So on this holy day, O oh God, we ask that you pour out a double portion of your spirit on us and on this bread and cup, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of your risen Son. Turn this ordinary bread and ordinary cup that is here and that we each hold in our hands into a reminder that you are the God of particulars, which means that you know us and love us in ways that no one else can. In this meal, may we remember that you gathered with friends and taught them how to love, so that in this meal we might gather with friends and share that same love with your world. Sharing that love, we now pray together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may now receive the bread, the new life of Christ given for you. You may now receive the cup, God's blessing, given and poured out for you. Let us pray. God, you are the God of garden mornings and sunrises. We come to you today hungry for a glimpse of your promised day. We thank you that you met us here, you fed us here, and you reminded us of your great love. With deep gratitude and alleluias, we pray. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to stand as you are able as we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
Today we have come from darkness to dis and despair to hope and joy. We have been transformed by God's love, and that is no joke. So go forth from this place to witness and testify to the message of hope and love that you have received this day. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated for our post loop. Oh. 